Hello and welcome to today's lesson. In this series on functions, we are studying the graphs of trigonometric functions. Today we will be looking at the graph of the tan function. Let's join Keke as she does this. We're going to start with the unit circle again. If we look at the unit circle, the size of the angle of theta will affect the position of the end point of the line segment. Tan of theta, which is the y-coordinate of the end point, divided by the x-coordinate of the end point, can be calculated for each new position of the line segment as the angle theta changes. For example, for theta at 30 degrees, Tan of theta will be 0, 0,5 divided by 0, 0,866, which is 0, 0,577. We can check that on the calculator. Tan 30 is, yes, 0, 0,577. If we increase theta to, say, 75 degrees, then tan of theta will be 3,732. This time, I just use the calculator to get the value of 1075 degrees. It is important to understand that the function is not using this distance x and this distance y as its two variables. It is the tan ratio of y divided by x that we want to use in the function. The function uses the size of the angle as the independent variable and the tan ratio for each angle as the dependent variable. So we want to know about the angle and the ratio at each position of the line segment. We'll start by working out some values for theta and tan theta. I've made a table with the headings theta and tan theta. To get a good idea of how the curve of the tan graph behaves, we will need to calculate lots of points. We'll find tan theta for every 15 degrees, starting at north degrees and ending at 360 degrees. We know two values for tan theta already because we worked them out. For 30 degrees, tan theta is 0, 0,577. And for 75 degrees, tan theta is 3,732. We won't need to calculate y divided by x for each value of the angle, since the value for tan theta is constant for each angle theta. The values are stored in our calculators, so we can just let our calculators do the work. Let's start with 0 degrees for the angle. Tan of 0 will be 0. Let's look at 15 degrees now. Tan of 15 is 0, 0,268. For 45 degrees, tan 45 is 1. Tan 60 is 1, 0,732. And we have tan 75 already. What do you get on your calculator for tan of 90 degrees? My calculator says I've made an error. Well, let's see if the calculator is right about this. Have a look at the unit circle again to see what happens at 90 degrees. y is 1 and x is 0. That means that y divided by x is undefined. The calculator can't compute an undefined value, so it shows an error. When we start plotting all the points on the graph, we'll have to decide how to show an undefined point. But let's move on. We get negative 3,732 at 105 degrees, negative 1,732 for 120 degrees, negative 1 for 135 degrees, and 0 for 180 degrees. We can continue putting all these values into our table until we finish here at 360 degrees. Now we have all the values for tan theta in the table. Do you see that some of the y values are being repeated as we fill in the table? For example, 0, 0,577 is here and here again, and its negative value is here and here. 
This suggests that there will be some kind of pattern in the graph. Let's see what patterns we can see in the values. Between 0 and 90 degrees, the value for tan theta starts at 0 and keeps increasing up to 3,73. Then tan theta is undefined at 90 degrees. There seems to be a break in the graph here because the next value for tan theta is negative 3,73. Then the values increase all the way up to positive 3,73 before we have an undefined point again at 270 degrees. From there, the y values go back to negative 3,73 and increase up to 0. So there's a pattern that seems to repeat itself every 180 degrees. The tan ratio increases every time from negative 3,732 through to positive 3,732. What do you think happens to tan theta between 3,7 and this point where it's undefined? We can predict from the pattern we've seen that the y values continue to increase as the angle increases up to 90 degrees. Then, as the angle increases from 90 degrees through 180 degrees and up to 270 degrees, the y values also increase. So we can predict that the y values will continue to increase after this point of 3,7. Once we have plotted the graph, we can look at whether our predictions were right. We can plot the graph from these points in the table. We'll plot the independent variable, which was the angle value on the x-axis, going from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. The tan ratio depends on the angle size, so it's the dependent variable, and we'll plot those values on the y-axis. We'll mark the y-axis for every unit from about negative 6 right up to positive 6. That gives us some space for the graph to increase or decrease further than the values that we have in the table. Now we are ready to plot the graph of the function. We can call the function y equals tan x. OK, as I read the values from the table, I will plot them. See if you can check each point as I go along. The first one is 0 degrees and 0. Then 15 degrees, 0, 0,268. Then 30 degrees, 0, 0,577. Then 45 degrees, 1. 60 degrees, 1,732. 75 degrees, 3,732. Let's stop there for a moment. It looks like these points are part of a curve up to here. But now we have to jump back down to this point, 105 degrees and negative 3,732. Then 120 degrees and negative 1,732. I've plotted all the points that we have from the table of values. Can you see from these points what shape this graph will have? We can see the points form a curve from this point at 0 degrees up to 75 degrees, then from this point 105 degrees to this point 255 degrees. If we checked even more points in between the ones we have plotted here, you would see that the graph is a smooth curve. So we can join these points with a curve. Be careful not to use straight line segments between the points. That would not represent the way the tangent function behaves. Now we are ready to check our prediction from earlier. We said that the y values would continue increasing after 3,732. I think we have enough points plotted to show us that the trend of the graph is to continue increasing. We can check this by looking at some x values bigger than 75 degrees. What is the tan of 80 degrees? It's 5,67. That's almost at the end of the y-axis we drew over here. 
What about tan of 85 degrees? That's 11,4 right off the y-axis we've drawn. Now I'm going to leave you to test some more points even closer to 90 degrees. You will find that as the x values get closer to 90 degrees, the y values get larger and larger, increasing to infinity. We can't even show every point, so we draw in an arrow to indicate going on forever. There are an infinite number of larger and larger y values on the graph as the angle value gets closer and closer to 90. But the graph will never cross the line where x is 90 degrees. So now let's see what it means to have the graph undefined at 90 degrees. Well, we can't plot any point here because undefined means that there's no y value for any point where x equals 90. On the Cartesian plane, we can indicate this with a dotted vertical line at x equals 90 degrees. In other words, x equal to 90 degrees is an asymptote for tan x. So we can show all the points where theta is 90 degrees with this dotted line. The graph approaches the asymptote but will never reach it. What happens to the graph on the other side of the asymptote when x is just a bit bigger than 90 degrees? As the angle values increase from just after 90 degrees, the negative y values increase from negative infinity. We can put an arrow onto this end of the graph to show that the y values came from negative infinity and increased. Just as on the other side of the asymptote, the graph approaches the asymptote but never reaches it. x equal to 270 degrees is another asymptote. The y values to the left of the asymptote increase infinitely as the x values approach 270 degrees. On the right of the asymptote for the angles just after 270 degrees, the y values increase from negative infinity until they reach naught at 360 degrees. It is important to understand that we have drawn the dotted line at the values of x that are asymptotes for tan theta. For these values of x, there is no y value possible. So we can say that the graph increases to infinity as the x value approaches 90 degrees and 270 degrees over here and here. And it increases from negative infinity as the x value moves away from the asymptotes over here and here. Have a look at the completed tan graph. What are its maximum and minimum y values? Be careful, this graph has no maximum or minimum values that we can measure. The range of this graph goes from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. Isn't it amazing to think that we can create a function with y values which range from negative infinity to positive infinity? Especially when we consider that this was all based on a unit circle that uses distances that are no greater than 1 or less than negative 1. The y equals tan x graph can be used as the parent graph for a family of tan functions with a general formula y equals a tan x plus q. I hope you have enjoyed the lesson. Do have a look at the trigonometric functions task video to explore more questions on the functions you are studying. Have a good day and tan you for watching.